it's Proud Cat Lover, and recently I've been having a request to do a new insect video. So I'll show you real quick. These are all my insect boxes I have. I believe there is 24, I want to say. And then, of course, I have my two big boxes here that were my display kits when I was into entomology when I was younger. You can see here, these are the few of the deals I have taped to the wall that were from my entomology. Um... I was in it for only a few years, and I wish I could have been in it longer when I was younger, just because I didn't really start doing it till a later age, and that meant that I wasn't able to be in 4-H that long. I started when I was 14. Um, even though I'd been collecting since I was 11, I didn't know 4-H had entomology stuff. And so I started when I was 14, and I stopped when I was 18, because when you're any older than 18, you can't go to state anymore, or at least that's how it was um, at our county. Apparently there's like some type of way that you can still compete as adults in certain classes, um, like baking and stuff, but I'm not really sure. Um, I think it's called like an open class competition or something like that. I'll need to look into it, but I'd like to start doing it again because <laughs> it was really enjoyable for me to just be kind of able to show off my bugs that I have and the work that I've put into these boxes and stuff. My dad actually built these boxes. They're out of cedar, I think. I'm pretty sure it was cedar. <laughs> Pretty sure I can't remember <laughs> and they have these little openings here that he had cut I can't remember what type of tool he had used um, And then it has plexiglass on the top and of course there would be a piece of tape over this normally if it were at the fair But where it's not and then I have a lot of my equipment over here um, glue and uh, I have in here the uh, moth crystals because moth balls which you'll see in all my boxes I'll have those little white packets. They're lavender scented moth crystals from Walmart and moth crystals keep, or mothballs, whichever you want to use, keep um, carpet beetle larvae from eating your insects. Because, like right now, if I didn't have them in here, it's guaranteed that some of these insects would be gone. Like, they'll get into the remains of the insect, and they will eat it alive. <laughs> Not really alive, but they will eat the entire body of it, and they'll just leave this powdery pile under the body and it's just really annoying because you work hard to get all these insects set up and then this bug comes in and eats them. So <laughs> real quick I'll show you. So I had to take the lid off real quick. Um, In here I'll just show you like I have a lot of insects that I haven't worked on yet. Right in here is really cool. Um, real quick I'll tell you this is a male black swallowtail and he hatched real late, so I couldn't release him because it was too cold, so I had to put him in the kill jar. Which is a makeshift. If you just have like a little container, um, and you get some like nail polish remover or ethyl acetate, which is what I use. I'll show you real quick what that looks like. I have this big container here, and I've had this since I've been collecting. I bought one other one, just in case, which is over there, if I run out. Um, but I have that, and that's what I use for... Um, killing the insects uh, humanely because it kills them pretty quick. Um, and then I've got a red spotted purple, which is this butterfly here. Let's see if I can flip it over. It looks like that on the back. It's really pretty. I don't really know if you can see it, but it's a shimmering blue and purplish. That's where they get their name. And then I've got a caddis fly right here, the one that looks like a moth. This is a caddis fly. So I'll put that back on real quick, and I'll show you this is a really cool beetle that I got sent to... I, don't know, ooh. <laughs> it got sent to me from uh, Tennessee, I believe, because that's where my grandma lives. And it's lost its color, which is sad. But it used to be gray with black spots. And it's known that beetles can lose their color when they're dead, so I'm not too surprised, but... It's a pretty big size, as you can see. <laughs> but it but uh, it was really pretty. I had pictures of it when I got it, so at least I have that, because it's pretty common for insects to lose their pigment when they're dead. So I'll show you my insect collection now. Okay, so this is my first box, and it's got the first orders in it. The box that's under it has the um, orders that are further into my book. So here I'll show you, I have some mayflies, and if any of you live near water, you'll know definitely what these are. Or if you have 
any like back porch lights or any front porch lights, anything outside that's light in the, around the spring and summer into early fall. They're normally something you'll commonly see. And this one over here is a type of giant mayfly because it's pretty big compared to this little guy down here. And then I've got my dragonflies here. This one I think is one of my cooler ones I have, which is a Halloween pennant. And it's really neat. I think I was collecting probably for f close to three or four years before I caught my first one. This here is a sphagnum sprite. And it is a extremely tiny, delicate damselfly. And I was told by the judges when I went in for entomology, when I would get judged, that supposedly it's really hard to spread um, damselfly wings correctly because they're so delicate. I've never had a problem with it, as you can see. They're pretty well spread, and as you can see over here as well, this one looks pretty good. Um, so I was kind of surprised that they said it was more difficult because <laughs> it just wasn't that hard for me. Um, this one here is a bigger dragon damselfly, and you can see here. Um, I can't really t see if you. I don't think you guys can see it because the reflection of these boxes, but it's kind of got a greenish color to it, and it's really neat. Um, I would open this up and take some of them out, but it's a real pain trying to put them back in um, while holding a phone. <laughs> but uh, yeah, these are some of my dragonflies. This one here is actually the male version, and this one's the female version, so you can see how much they differ from each other, um, just in pattern-wise and everything, which I think this one is... Okay, this one's a widow skimmer. I always get confused with this one over here, which is the common whitetail. Um, because the males have similar patterns, but the wings are different shapes. You can see how this one is a lot straighter. But it's kind of hard when you're looking at them flying around and being like, Oh, I know what that is. Normally, I only can tell when I catch it. Then I'm like, okay, I know what this is. <laughs> and uh, this one right here that's a yellowish color, these are pretty common to see. Along with these ones that are a blue color. And I've got my walking sticks over here. Um, these two are females, and this is the male. The females normally have a heavier, bigger body, and the male will have a thin body, and he'll have these little tiny uh, pincer-type appendages that are for gripping the female when they're breeding. Um, I don't have a green one, and I've always wanted a green one, and <laughs> I just have never been able to find one. It's, it's really weird. Um, so over here we have my grasshoppers, and this is an obscured bird grasshopper, and what's weird about it, which I had one over here, I don't know... I think I took it out to do uh, a box that I had done for a display. Um, but I have two of them. Normally they're green and yellow and black. And this one here, I've never seen very many like it. It is, when I caught it, this stripe here was pink. The stripe on its back, which it still kind of is. It was pink striped and it was brown bodied. And I was like, that's, that's different. <laughs> so, which I was reading that the obscured bird grasshopper can have two different forms. So, but this one's the more uncommon one, at least for me. I've never seen it, <coughs> except for twice, and of course the first time I caught it. Um, so we have some katydids, which are right here. That's what this little guy right here is. Um, and they come in different forms. This one, I can't remember the name of it. Some of the katydids don't have a common name. Some only have a scientific name. Um, this one here is a sword-bearing katydid, and if you notice, you'll see the dates down below where it says the name that's when they were caught. So you can see just how old this one is. It's from 2012. It's preserved pretty well, but it is starting to fade. Um, the entire body used to be green and it's starting to turn tan and yellow. So down here I have a grasshopper that's got its wings spread. I'll try to cover the reflection for you. And my mom at first thought that this was a butterfly <laughs> until I told her because some people just don't think that they have really pretty colors that grasshoppers are just ugly. You would never know by looking at this grasshopper that it had orange hind wings and a lot of grasshoppers will have orange, uh, red, some of them even have a kind of coral pinky color and some will have yellow. This one of course has a golden yellow orange color. Um, and then we've got the tree crickets which are these here and they come in a diff couple different forms. You can see the one on the left is a lot thinner bodies as were the one on the right here has a lot more of a lace-typed uh, pattern wing and everything. Um, then let's see, I don't think... Oh yeah, and then this is a juvenile, but I've never found an adult. They are humongous, I've heard. This is a cave cricket, 
Um, it's very similar to a camel cricket, but a camel cricket's a little different. This you will find most commonly in your basements. And then over here we have, and this one's a little cutie, I don't know if you can see it very well, because the color and everything's a real pain, but it actually has a pinkish red hind wings, and then it's got blue on its uh, back legs here, um, the part that's arched. It's really hard to see with the, with this lighting and everything, with it reflecting so bad, and then this one here is pretty because it's got a lot of speckles on it and everything. And I used to know almost every single one of these insects' names by heart, but I haven't been out collecting for a while just because I've been so busy with the animals that it's starting to fade, so I'll have to renew my memory by doing this video too. So these, I do know they are amber wings, they're really pretty. This one up here with only yellow is a male. This one down here with the patterns is the female. They are really pretty. And they're tiny compared to most because you can see they're pretty small. Like they're only about an inch and a half to two inches. Um, we've got right here a ring-legged earwig, which back then this was the only earwig I had ever found. You can see it is extremely tiny. It's only a little bit bigger than the pin on the top. And uh, now I have humongous earwigs I found through working at the greenhouse. So, I haven't had the chance to do anything with them. Then here we have my praying mantises, or mantid. Praying, it's the Carolina mantid, but um, this one here is a female and this one here is a male. He is more green and brown, where she's just all brown. Um, I also have a couple... Oh, <laughs> I also have a couple more... I have to start talking slower. Um, in my boxes that you'll be seeing. But um, I just have a few in here on display. And then here I've got a few types of cockroaches. This one here, I'd have to say, is the prettiest cockroach I've ever seen. Um, it's got a red head, it's got yellow borders on the wings, and I found it outside. I'm not really sure what kind it is, because I tried looking it up and I never could find anything on it. Then here we have, I'm pretty sure, a termite. Pretty sure that's what it is. I mean, it's been in there for a while, so back when I was younger I could have thought it's a termite. It could be an ant, I don't know. But, um, we have it under termite. No one ever told me any different at the fair, so... I'm assuming it's a termite. And here we have cicadas, or cicadas, however you want to say it. These are actually the ones that people call locusts. And they're also the ones that the cicada killer, or cicada, however you want to say it. The cicada killer, um, which is a wasp, these are actually what they hunt. Um, and they're also the ones that have the one that lives up to 13 years. I have one, but I haven't got it pinned. Well, actually, yeah, I do. It's in one of my boxes. Um, I'll have to show it to you, but yeah, I've actually never caught any of the ones that are the 13-year-old ones to hatch. Um, when I was working at the greenhouse, there was actually a woman that brought some in, and I was able to talk her into giving me a couple. <laughs> so, <clears throat> down here we have, and let me see if I can find something for this reflection. It's terrible. Okay, do this. So down here we have, um, true bugs, which are... They're very similar to beetles, only have they have soft bodies, they don't have a hard electra. Or, I hope I'm saying that white, right, which, I don't know. <laughs> electra is just the uh, shells, pretty much. But we've got stuff like the stink bug, we've got some assassin bugs, which is like that one there. We've got a wheel bug, which it's called a wheeled bug, and I don't know if I can easily show it to you, but you can kind of see here, it's got that wagon wheel going on on its back. That's why they're called wheel bugs. You can see that uh, right there, <laughs> its mouth part. Oh yeah, you don't want to get bit by that. I have heard it hurts like the dickens. You don't want to get bit. Then we have over here, which this one's cool, is a blood-sucking cone nose. And it's really neat because it's got that orange pattern to it. We've got a black assassin bug, the sycamore assassin bug, which is awesome. I just love how, and I'll see if I can zoom in for you. They are bright orange with the black stripes, and they are so cool looking. Even their antennas have stripes. They're really cool. Um, let's see. We've also got the stilt bug. This thing is really cool. Um, for a long time I didn't know what these were, and they're really neat because look how delicate their body is. It literally looks like a really tiny, thin blade of grass. The bug itself. It is that small. Like, anything that has to go on a point is too small for me to pin. <laughs> That's how tiny it is. We've got a flat bug, and this thing literally is flat, which let me see if I can do this. There we go. So look how flat that bug is. You can definitely see why it's called that, because see how this body kind of sticks up a little? That thing is like, 
and his antennas are really cool. See how they're linked instead of straight? That's also a neat feature. Um, then we've got some more familiar ones, like down here. We have the ambush bug. This is what you would normally see on goldenrod. The female is going to be a more dull color than the male. See how he's really bright yellow? She's more of a tan. They're really cool, and they are not harmful to people like the assassin bugs are, so if you wanted to hold, hold one, they won't hurt you. We've got, and the big-eyed bug is really cute. You can see it is very, very, very tiny, um, but it has humongous bug eyes, bug eyes, and so that's why it's called the big-eyed bug, and it is really funny. Up here we've got an albino version, or almost albino version, of a milkweed bug. Um, which some people around here call them Barcerier bugs, and I'm like, where did that name come from? Because <laughs> that's why I always called them, and then I found out they were called a milkweed bug. But the orange ones are more common of what you'll see, and then this white one here was really cool that I found. It still has a little bit of orange on its uh, head, but down here on the prothorax and on the thorax, down to the abdomen, it's all white, which is really cool. And then, of course, this is the milkweed bug that's the small version that's pretty common as well. Then we've got the leaf-footed bug, which is right here. He's really cool. They're so common, it's pretty easy for me to remember those names. That's what it looks like. And then we've got antlions down here. And antlions are actually the ones that build those little pits in the dirt and in the sand. And when ants fall into their pits, they eat them. And uh, the ones that are antlions are this one here and this one. This is a green lacewing, and those actually eat aphids, so they're really good um, for your plants. And I think I've got, yeah, another lacewing here, and then another antlion here. And then this is an owl fly, I'm pretty sure. Let me look. Okay, this is a fish fly, and this one's an owl fly. I always forget. <laughs> this one's an owl fly, this one's a fish fly. This one here, you cannot tell, can you? I actually broke its antenna one time. <laughs> you cannot tell, but it's the one on the left. See how it's kind of misshapen where the base is. Yeah, I broke that one time. I actually was able to glue it back on. <laughs> you would have never known if I would told you. If I hadn't told you, I mean. So up here we have oh, leaf hoppers. There we go. I was like sitting there like, what are they called? These are leaf hoppers, which obviously the thing says that I could just looked. Um, but these are what you'll mo more commonly see on tree leaves. You'll see them on uh, uh, flowers and plants. Sometimes they're not that good for your plants because some of them will eat on vegetables and everything. This here is a buffalo tree hopper. He is really cool looking as you can see. Then we've got the ragweed tree hopper which let me put my hand here. You can see he's got some horns as well. And then let's see there was one other one. Where did he go? There he is. We have the two marked tree hopper and he's really neat. Um, and then, of course, we have the prairie cicada, and you can see just how tiny this thing is compared to its older, I mean, not older, compared to its bigger cousin. This thing is tiny. You'll see it, like, resting on blades of grass and stuff. So that is my first box, and then I'll show you my second. I might do these in a different video just because this one's going to be pretty long by itself. Okay, guys, so this is my prized possession right here, this second box has put has had so much work put into it in making it look nice um, I know some of the butterflies are crammed in here but for the fair um, I had to do that because uh, you have to fit a lot of insects into these boxes to be able to register for the class I was in which was 300 insects 150 insects in each box so I had to work really hard to be able to put these in here without making them uh, too crowded but we'll start off of course with the beetles and up here we've got a scavenger beetle and a type of diving beetle, which this is the diving beetle. They're both diving beetles, I should say, but this one is the scavenger beetle. Um, I, I have a box somewhere, because I, um, I did a talk for a garden club, and I took some of the insects out of my boxes that I could put into there. Um, I can't actually remember, I think it was, it was a larger beetle. I can't remember what I had there, though. My mind has drawn a blank, but in the next video with these boxes it'll be in there and then I'll be able to show you guys but this is my beetle collection and well a small part of my beetle collection these are more of my prized possessions the showy ones these are a couple tiger beetles that I actually caught in Oklahoma because our um, 4-H group had gone on a trip a day trip and this one is cool as well zoom in on it it's got as you can see a 
really cool pattern on its shell and this one looks like a little rainbow it's so cute we've also got let's see what else is really cool let's see oh yeah we have this one here that is purple and red this one's just awesome <laughs> that one's my favorite um and then of course there's the splendid dung beetle which is really pretty it's a green and red and it's really neat I actually found that one dead outside of a Freddy's restaurant <laughs> so that was kind of funny um we've got here a sunflower beetle these are really cool looking even though they're bad for sunflowers um, I really like the patterns on their shell my camera doesn't want to focus on the bug only on the paper there we go <laughs> oh darn <laughs> but uh, we've got the pink spotted ladybug and this is actually one of the ones um, this is the type of one that I raised a whole bunch of I didn't actually keep any of mine but um, you can see here they definitely are pink and compared to I don't actually think I have any pink ladybugs in, I mean any red ladybugs in here I don't see any this one here I actually got from Branson Missouri my parents had gone up there for vacation and they found this in the bathtub this is an oak timber worm it is the weirdest looking type of beetle I've ever seen they can have two different types of snouts or where their uh, pincers are um, this one actually has teeth or whatever you want to call it and the other one has a snout like a bull weevil would so they come in a couple different ways which this right here is a type of bull weevil it's in the family see how it has a snout that's the other way that that one can come then this one here I've been reading and found out it's kind of uncommon to find it's a fire blister beetle you don't ever want to get anything um, from this beetle on your skin it will actually give you blisters <laughs> don't do it it's very painful um we've got the milkweed longhorn that's down here I really love longhorn beetles like for example this one's in the family you can see how it has very long antennas oh that's what was up here it was a longhorn beetle <laughs> um let's see if we've got any other beetles that are neat looking this one here the clay colored leaf beetle look how big its front legs are this is the male and his legs are quite large he's really cool looking I think that's mainly all the neater looking ones we've got the flower loving longhorn here and it's got some really neat patterns going on um and then of course we have the this is more common the six spotted tiger beetle this one's the more common one it's a greenish blue color um, and they're pretty easy to find we've also got another longhorn beetle here and you can see its antennas are quite large they're bigger than its body is and this is a male of course the females don't have a showy of antennas kind of like this one here and then this one is a click beetle it's very similar to the eyed click beetle which is up here this is the largest one I've ever found it's almost two inches long uh, and then over here with the wasps we've got the cicada killer which I was telling you about kills those cicadas or the katydids I mean not katydids the cicadas or the cicadas however you want to say it um, we've got the evil yellow jacket <laughs> they're mean and uh, we've got a I believe this is an organ pipe wasp right here um let me see nope it's not that one it's the other one that I have I don't know where the organ pipe wasp went um, but this one's a great black wasp I have written on there but it looks similar to the Oregon pipe wasp then here we have a type of um, a Chumon or Ichimon type of wasp here and this is an it's ovipositor this long needle looking appendage here this is actually what the females use to lay eggs in the trees because um, they drill through bark with liquids they secrete at the tip and they lay the eggs on the inside of the wood and their larvae actually eats uh, pigeon tremex larvae, which pigeon tremexes are pest um, wasps to trees because their uh, babies actually will eat on the soft bark and it'll help make the tree kind of rot and stuff. They're not that good of a wasp. They are cool looking though, and here's another example. This one here is a male, I believe. I didn't put male because I wasn't sure, but I believe he is because you can see just how tiny he is compared to this one here. There are different types, so he might just be a smaller species. Um, this one here is really cool. It's a great golden wasp. It is really beautiful. It's got an orange abdomen. It's got a kind of golden yellow uh, thorax, which probably is how it got its name. These wasps here are really cool. They have a really big head. 
this one here. You can see that it's a very big head. <laughs> Let's see, we'll just kind of show you a few others. Here's a digger bee, and those are the ones that burrow into the ground. We got a cuckoo wasp, and those are really pretty because they're like a very pretty metallic green color. And they're very similar to a sweat bee, they're just um, different. We got a potter wasp that's really pretty. Let's see what we have. These wasps right here, I was told, are not very common in Kansas, but I caught one anyway. So, um, this one guy that I used to have as an instructor for entomology always would brag because his place was the only one that had a population of this type of wasp. And I'm like, really? <laughs> I caught this one out at the lake, I believe. And I'm like, well, apparently your place isn't the only one. <laughs> So, um, this is a thread-waisted wasp. This one is really cool looking. You can see how tiny its abdomen is. Um, and it is just a really cute wasp. And, I mean, if you guys think I'm crazy for calling them cute, I mean, they're adorable when you look at them in the face. Like, wasps are not that scary looking in the face unless you spread the mandibles. Which, that's what I've done here. <laughs> um, that one kind of folded back up because the muscles tightened. And, I mean, the muscles were loose. Sometimes they do that. You'll go and pin them, and if you don't have them pinned long enough, the muscles will fold back in, so it's a pretty common thing to have happen. Um, over here we have, which I was telling you about a while ago with that one, these are caddis flies. And you can find them more or less around lights, um, around ponds, stuff like that. And they come in very, um, they vary from shapes, um, sizes, and colors. As you can see, this one's pretty large, that one's pretty tiny. And then I just put a moth right there because I couldn't fit it down here. Um, we've got a morning cloak, which that is this gorgeous beauty here. And when they fold their wings up, they look just like tree bark. So this one actually almost escaped me. It landed on our fireplace. And I'm looking and looking. I spot a pattern that doesn't match the fireplace. And I'm like, there you are, you little booger. So that was the first ever time I'd caught a morning cloak. And I've been collecting since I was 11. And that was like a year or two ago that I got that one. Um, we've got... Let me see if I can remember this one's name. Okay, I just looked. I, I cheated. I couldn't remember because there's the Great Spangled Fritillary and then there's this one which is the Regal Fritillary. And you can't really tell because the video is, it's hard to see, but the hind wings here kind of have a blue tint to them, a real dark navy blue. And let me see if I can get my phone. That might help. Uh, you still can't really see it, but it is a beautiful butterfly. And on the under wings... Those white spots are actually um, reflective, so they're kind of sparkly and everything. Here we have a tomato hawk moth or a tomato hornworm. These are bad news. You don't want them on your tomatoes. Um, they will devastate. I mean, they won't devastate. They will, yeah, they'll devastate you. They will completely take down a tomato plant in like a few days. They are crazy. We've got a goat wing. A goat. <laughs> oh my gosh. We've got a goat wing butterfly, and this is the male. As you can see, he will be an orange. The female is more of a softer orange, kind of more brown. Of course, we have a tiger swallowtail here. Um, we've got a, uh, I think this is the female. Yeah, this is the female um, polythemus moth, and it's a type of silk moth. These moths are actually born without mouth parts. Um, not as caterpillars, but as moths when they come out of their chrysalis. Or their cocoon, I guess it is. It's cocoon for moth, it's chrysalis for butterfly. But when they come out of their cocoon, um, they have like two weeks to live. And in those two weeks, they have to find a mate, breed, and lay eggs, and then they die of exhaustion. Um, both the male and female do. So this one I actually got from a friend who had been babysitting these kids. They found out on their porch after it laid eggs. And uh, the male that I have, I actually caught. But that's how I got my female, and she's a very beautiful beautiful moth. Um, she's about four and a half inches in wingspan when her wings are spread like this. Because you can see here she's she's pretty large compared to my hand. Um, then here is my prized possession. This is a Titan Sphinx moth. It is rare to find in Kansas, um, which is obviously where I live as you guys know, because I've said that before. But um, it is rare in Kansas. And I actually caught this on my butterfly bush, and I was so ecstatic. My hands were shaking. I was so excited because I, I knew what it was because I had seen it in a book. And I was like, Dad, I just caught the rarest moth I've ever found. <laughs> um, here we have a question mark butterfly. This is the spring form. Um, wait. Yeah, I think this. It's a question mark or a comma because they look very similar. 
I don't... Okay, here's the comma. The comma looks like this. It's got very ragged wings. They're actually... They come out of their uh, chrysalis like that. But okay, yeah, this is the question mark. Um, the fall form is going to be really dark brown, and it's not going to have uh, a lot of the oranges because it's going to be more having to blend in with the surroundings to stay safe and everything. Uh, down here we have... Let's see if I can get it to do this, I believe. Yeah, the little sulfur. The yellow one is a male, the white one is the female, and they're really pretty butterflies. We've got some skippers here, we've got the dainty sulfurs, which are these little guys that are yellow. You can see how tiny they are compared to my finger. The top one is a male, bottom one's a female. We've got a red admiral, which is really pretty. On the hind wings, they actually have some greens on them, kind of like painted ladies do. And let's see, we've got a little azure butterfly right there. We've got a yellow sulfur butterfly, which is this yellow one. We've got a snout-nosed butterfly, which is really cool looking. And of course the comma. Um, some moths I have never been able to find. This one looks like a Reese's peanut butter cup. And it is extremely tiny. If it were to be on my fingertip, it would probably go on my pinky tip. That's how tiny it is. We of course have a female monarch. And I've had this one in my collection for a really long time. And then this one is a type of underwing moth. I'm not really sure the kind. There's just so many underwings. It's kind of hard to tell which one you have. And then this one here is a cabbage white. That one's the female. This one here is the male. Um, let's see. This here is a buckeye butterfly, and it's really pretty. As you can see, it's got purples and pinks in its eyes. We've got a snowberry clear wing, which looks just like a hummingbird when it's flying. I kid you not. Um, here's a couple other random moths. The one on the top here has really pretty white spots. Then we've got this one here. We have, and I always forget the name of this one. Um, it's really hard for me to pronounce. <laughs> Alanthius, I'm going to say. Alanthius moth. It looks like old paper, like back from the 80s. Because look, it's like got flowers in orange. It's just hilarious. <laughs> then of course up here we have a tiger moth and they're really pretty. And then this is a type of Sphinx moth. I can't remember an Osage. Okay, this is a Pandorus Sphinx moth. I couldn't remember. The Osage actually is brown, so never mind. I just remembered. But this actually has a really pretty pinkish green on the hind wings. Sometime when I actually have the time, I'll show you guys. Um, let's see, we'll move over to the flies. We've got a crane fly here, which looks like a mosquito, but it is not. We've got a black horsefly, which are these are the biggest horseflies you can normally find around where I live. We have these, which are robber flies. They will actually, they're more or less found in just kind of like prairies. They like to hide on long grass. Um, they like to hunt flies, uh, butterflies, uh, true bugs, dragonflies, stuff that has soft bodies that they can easily catch. And they actually have a mouth part that will kind of put fluid into the insect and then it sucks it out like a smoothie. So that's, you know, don't get bit by one of those. It hurts, I've heard. Um, this is a soldier fly. It is not a bee. And the way to tell bees and flies apart is flies here will have one, uh, they'll have a whole entire antenna. It won't be linked or anything. And they'll be very short and they'll come off their head like that. And you can see here the difference between this fly. Now I'll show you a bee. Oh, where's my bee? There he is. See how this bee, its antennas stick up? They, most of the time, have more than one segment in them. And you can just see how the head is held. It's a lot different. And the antennas are normally really short with flies. And you see how this bee has long antennas. And then we go back to the fly. And he has short antennas. And the body, of course, is different as well. Um, so that's those. And then we have a blue bottle fly, which you can't really see very well, but it is a has a blue abdomen. You can kind of see it a little bit right there. Kind of. Um, then we've got these little guys here. I don't know the name of this one, but it is a metallic green and blue. It is the coolest little guy. I think it's a type of flower fly, possibly, because I found it pollinating, but uh, I'm not really sure. And then, of course, we have a little mosquito here. Was not sad to watch that one die. <laughs> Then, I don't know if I have my unique looking fly in here. Let me look. Oh, there it is. Yes. This thing is the weirdest looking thing I ever saw in my entire life when it comes to a fly. Look at that. It looks like an alien. I mean, look at the head. It is the weirdest looking fly I have ever found. And when I saw that thing, I was like, what the heck is it? I have to have it. So I caught it. <laughs> 
here we have a drone fly and drone flies are type a type of bee mimicker and as you can see here they this one not as much as this one that's a type of flower fly I believe I think oh, it just says fly but I think it might be um, but yeah these are one of the other ones that are commonly thought to be bees when they're flies then down here we have bee flies which are also a bee mimic type and they are really cute they're little fuzzy bodies let me see if I can put my hand there we go and the one up top is a golden color and the one down bottom is a white and they're really cute and then we have a fruit fly which is down here I think I might have a walnut husk fly in here as well let me look uh, <laughs> not seeing one. Here's a moth fly and it's really tiny as you can see and they call it a moth fly because the wings it has, there we go, the wings it has resemble a moth as you can see. They're very fuzzy, very um, have scales on them just like moth wings do. Um, we have a stilt fly here which is unique. They're not very common for me to find and they have very long legs except the bad thing is unlike that stilt bug, the stilt fly has uh, very delicate legs and they break very easily and I've never been able to pin one without breaking legs. This is an interesting one as well. I think it would be more or less related to the midges which are these ones up here. The body shape and everything looks very similar. Then we have some flower flies right here that are really pretty. And then we've got a picture winged fly which this one's very common to find. We've got a vegetable leaf miner. This thing is so tiny. Look how small. Like it's pretty much the size of the pin. It is extremely tiny. And then we have a uh, squab fly and I'm pretty sure squab flies are the ones you don't want to be bit by because they hurt. They're little black flies and they're pretty painful to get bit by I think I was reading. So anyway I think that's the whole box. I've gone over it without spending a thousand years. So if you guys have any questions or comments or anything, feel free to ask. I'm always happy to answer the questions and I will try to make a video with these boxes in it later. But I haven't eaten breakfast yet and I'm pretty hungry so we'll come back to that. And then next time we'll also do a video on the stuff I have in alcohol vials. Um, right here is my green anole that I put in my alcohol vial, and I can't really get this to focus, so I'm just going to put her right here. There we go. Um, as some of you may know, she passed away, and I wanted to preserve her body and everything, so I stuck her in an alcohol vial, um, just so that I would still have her. She's kind of faded into a brown, like if they were to be fired down and stuff, because obviously they could turn green or brown. So anyway guys, thank you for watching the first part of this uh, episode, and I'll try to make it episode 2 with the boxes and then episode 3 with the alcohol vials. So anyway, thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed, and have a good day.